Hello friends, this video on conservation of plants and animals part 1 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. Topics to be covered in this lesson are Introduction Deforestation causes and consequences Why conserve plants and animals Forest conservation Biosphere reserves Flora and fauna Endemic species Wildlife sanctuaries National parks Reforestation And finally the lessons learned out of this entire lesson so what are we going to talk about in conservation of plants and animals? Why do we even want to conserve plants and animals? So what do you see on the screen? So the screen shows you the mother earth. So on earth exists life and that is what makes earth unique from other planets. So you not only it is not only the human beings which survive on this earth, but also a huge variety of other animals, birds, microorganisms, plants. So we see a very many different varieties of living organisms on earth and that is its speciality. So it is our duty to take care of all these living organisms. So here in this lesson we will see how can we conserve or how can we protect all these living organisms which include plants as well as animals. Because existence of life on earth make it special. So do we want to lose this speciality? Of course not. We want to retain it. We want to conserve it. We want to maintain it. Now why do we want to conserve it? That also we will see in the next few slides. Now if we do not maintain the existence of life on earth, then what would happen? Then earth will just become a mere planet which will just be a planet inside which there will be no life forms. Because if we don't take care of it, then a day will come when there will be no life forms existing on earth. Because there are so many issues which are coming up now. The environment has to be maintained at the right temperature so that living organisms are able to survive. Living organisms should not be continuously dying due to some or the other reason. So we need to strike that balance so that living organisms can comfortably live on on earth. So if you look at the variety, you will see that a huge variety of living organisms exist on earth and that is known as biodiversity. So the word bio means life and diversity refers to variety. So the variety of life forms on earth is called biodiversity. So if you look at the huge variety, you see elephants, dogs, monkeys, rats, rabbits, tiger, lion. So do you think that all of them look very similar to each other? So if you compare their size, they look very different from each other. If you compare their behavior, their shapes, their voices, so everything seems so different from one another, but they all are living organisms. So, so many huge variety of animals, not only that, even human beings, we are also part of a living organism. The tiny insects and the flies or the worms, they are also part of it. There is again a huge variety of organisms which live in water, whether in the marine water or in fresh water, but you see a large variety of fishes, dolphins, sharks, whales, octopus, starfish. So there are so many aquatic life forms also which exist on earth. Not only that, you also have extremely tiny microorganisms like bacteria, fungi, which is not visible to our naked eye. And finally, a huge, huge variety of plants where you have so many flowering plants, so many non-flowering plants. Some of them are very short in height. Some of them are like huge trees. So again, you have a very big variety of plants. So if you look at this, the screen obviously will not be able to accommodate the variety of life forms which exist on earth. Now, do you think that it is going to be a tedious task to try to conserve each of these living organisms? Well, not really. That's because 
if we follow a certain things in our life, if we follow certain principles in our life, we will be very well able to protect these huge variety of living organisms. So in this lesson, we are going to focus on how can we conserve or how can we protect the biodiversity, that is the variety of living organisms on earth. So now something that is bothering you is, do we want to lose this rich diversity? Now that we saw that our planet is so very rich in the variety of living organisms, the planet is so very rich in diversity. So do we really want to make it poor? Do we really want to uh, lose out some of the living organisms from the list? Well, not really. We don't think so that it should be done. So what should we do then? We should try to conserve them. Now it is something like, uh, let us suppose that you have done a lot of hard work and with that hard work, I mean, maybe you have done a lot of hard work in the job which you do and that's how you are able to. So when you do a lot of hard work and then you earn something, I mean, not necessarily money, but maybe you have done a lot of hard work from your side and that's how you have been able to score good in your exam. Maybe you scored 10 out of 10. So would you like to lose your marks just like that? You will not, right? Because you have done so much of hard work and that's why you are rich with good marks. So you don't want to lose it. So in a very similar way, our earth is already rich in the variety of living organisms which exist on it. So there is no point that we should let earth lose any of these organisms. Also, there are many advantages if there is a huge variety of organisms which exist on Earth. So that is why we will talk about biodiversity conservation. That is, how can we conserve this huge variety of life forms on Earth? So let us first look at the importance of biodiversity to the ecosystem. So how conserving or how existence of biodiversity help our ecosystem. Now before we talk about the benefits, let us first let me first explain you what is ecosystem. What is ecosystem? It is basically a system, the entire system consisting of the living organisms as well as the non-living components. They together form the ecosystem. So ecosystem would include all the plants plus all the animals plus all the microorganisms, plus the non-living components like soil, water, air, which are essential for the survival of these living components. So all the living components plus the non-living components, they together form the ecosystem. Now each of these components depend on one another for their survival. So do you think, think that these organisms, the living organisms, whether it is plant, animal or microorganism, will they be able to survive if there is no soil, no water, no air? No, that is not possible. So the living components need the non-living components for their survival. So this entire system is known as ecosystem. So some examples of of ecosystems are like forest is an ecosystem because within the forest you have the non-living components like soil, water, air, etc. You also have living components like plants, insects, animals. So that makes up an ecosystem. Similarly, a pond is an ecosystem because within the pond you have everything, all the non-living components that are required for the aquatic animals for their survival. And you also have the aquatic organisms. So these living components of an ecosystem are called biotic components and the non-living components are called abiotic or non-living components. So you can say they are abiotic. So that was a brief introduction to ecosystem because we will be using the term ecosystem very often when we talk about biodiversity. So I explained it to you. Now let us see how having a huge variety of living organisms help. So species diversity results in a more stable biological community. So what do we mean by more stable community? It is like different organisms, as I said, different living organisms, they depend on each other and also on non-living components for their existence and their sustenance. Like if you talk about human beings, we depend on other living organisms, sometimes for our food, sometimes for water, sometimes for our survival. 
correct for example if you consider our food we, f we some of us directly feed on plants or plant products some of us feed on animals which eat plants so directly or indirectly we are dependent on other living organisms so now when we have more variety of organisms then the dependency on one particular organism reduces for example like let us say there are certain animals which feed only on plants for example if you consider rabbit a rabbit feeds only on plants now if you have more varieties of plants then it is better for the survival of rabbits right so similarly there are other higher animals which feed on smaller animals like rabbit so if you have more variety of such animals then the survival of those higher animals become easier so having a more variety helps in or adds to the stability of the entire biological community so that is one advantage next is increased diversity results in increased productivity so when you have more diversity when you have more variety of living organisms your productivity also increases because each group of organism is going to produce something for example if you talk about plants so plants they undergo photosynthesis and they produce food so they are the primary producers now when you have more variety of plants your productivity is definitely going to increase right so each species will have a very important role to play in the entire ecosystem so biodiversity boosts up the ecosystem productivity because when the number of organisms when the number of species increases the net productivity coming out of that ecosystem will also increase ensure sustenance of all life forms now as i was telling that all organisms are dependent on other organisms for their survival so if you see here plants they prepare their own food now these plants are being eaten up by animals like goat or cow or rabbit these animals in turn are eaten by bigger animals like lion or tiger now when all these plants and animals die what happened they are they become dead and decaying matter this dead and decaying matter are then broken down and they mix with the soil and who does this job this is done by the decomposers and who are decomposers primarily bacteria and fungi they act as decomposers so if you see all these living organisms they depend on each other so when you have more variety of living organisms existing it is better for the sustenance of all the life forms now not only this it also the existence of a huge diversity also helps the environment so we will see that a little later that what would happen if the species start vanishing like let us suppose if right now on earth there are say just an example let us suppose there are hundred species of plants and animals existing on earth now if i say that uh, that i want to conserve biodiversity that means i want to protect these 100 species of plants and animals so that they continue to exist in the future generations also now just imagine what would happen if i don't take proper care of the entire 100 species over a period of time maybe 10 or 15 species will vanish they will die off completely so they will not reproduce further and their entire the entire species will end it cease to exist they will not exist anymore so instead of 100 species now you are left with only 85 now in such a situation there is an adverse impact on the environment also now how for example if i let me take the example of plants now if the number of plants keep reducing due to some or the other reason let us suppose if we start cutting down all the plants now what will happen gradually the number of plants will keep decreasing now when the number of plants decreases what happens the amount of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere will keep on increasing when number of plants decreases then the amount of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere will increase because plants are the ones which take in carbon dioxide from the atmosphere during photosynthesis now when there are less plants then there are less the organisms to take in carbon dioxide so the amount of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere will keep on increasing now when the amount of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere increases what is carbon dioxide carbon dioxide is a greenhouse gas we learned about greenhouse effect in our previous lesson right so 
the greenhouse effect increases. Now, when greenhouse effect increases, then what happens? The average temperature of the earth increases, which we call as global warming. Now, when the average temperature of the earth increases, is it something good for the environment? No, this is not good for the environment. This is not good for the survival of living organisms on earth. So that means also if the species diversity start reducing, it has an adverse effect on the environment. Now because of all these reasons, it is very important to conserve biodiversity that is to protect the variety of living organisms existing on the earth. Thank you. Please visit www.examfear.com to watch more educational videos with a better experience. Please do not forget to like and subscribe to our YouTube channel for latest updates. Thank you once again.